<laughs> Hi, so uh, my name is Jan Herzog. I'm uh, one of the founders of uh, Bancor uh, Protocol, which uh, invented liquidity pools. And um, we were also in touch with the EOS CC before they actually created the uh, launched mainnet. Uh, we built with uh, with our team the first, I would say, complicated smart contract on EOS that was the run smart contract using the Bankful protocol. Uh, still using it, I believe, right? And uh, back in 2018, we started to build on EOS. Um, and my background, my personal background, has always been uh, social uh, media, social networks. I created my first social network in uh, 19, uh, 1998, oh. if you can believe that. Uh, contact networks, if you look it up. And uh, created a social video sharing site that became quite popular, just second to YouTube, called Metacafe.com. And that has been my life. And, uh, you know, when I got into blockchain, we couldn't do a lot of consumer stuff on blockchain, but consumers, me, you know, I like... Consumer, they don't like finance, but personally, they're really investing in the stock. And that's why I love the use from the beginning, because it was built with the lessons of Steemit, which was really the first consumer blockchain app in existence. And, and you know, from all those learning, EOS was built. And we started to build on that because we wanted, and my dream was the greatest social network, social media other on the blockchain. And EOS was obviously the best technology for us to use. For that and uh, we've been uh, working on this social network called BBS network that we created in 2020 we've been working it for quite a while we launched it on the, the web in uh, March 2021st and the beautiful thing we launched it with a site called StarWarsTheory.com which is all about Star Wars. Half of the people there don't know what blockchain is, and the other half that knows what blockchain is, they hate blockchain. And they don't even know that they're using blockchain when they're using our service. And that has been, you know, a big part of our vision that we should be web to compatible uh, to the fullest. And that's not just in terms of not messing the user with wallets or such, this such thing. It's actually, it's really about performance. It's really about everything moving fast also one of the reasons we chose EOS. But I think one of the main thing was our ability to actually post a lot of data, a lot of textual data on chain in a very, very low cost. We actually did, you know, some, some measurement to make sure that we're, we had the right uh, choice. And we measured the cost in all those, you know, so many layer two solutions. And, and EOS was by far the, the, the most cost effective and you can use actual, you know, uh, block, block uh, explorers to see, to see what's on the chain, to, to, uh, for users to, to read it, it's plain text. So it's not like hash and all of that. And, and that was very important for us because we believe that the most fundamental thing for us, a new generation social network is that all the data is public. Because when all the data is public, then no one can control the network. It's actually that simple when all the data is public then people can build their own application to access their own experience to access the social network you believe in the future that there will be one social network the, 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 you know the situation today where you have so many is actually ridiculous uh, as as you know user have to follow in different networks and have different accounts and different type of contacts that doesn't make sense it's like having multiple internet doesn't make sense. There's room for one internet, one standard, and that's our vision. And we've been building it, uh, you know, since then. And a uh, few months ago was a very big milestone for us as we released our mobile app for iOS and Android, which, as you can imagine, it's quite a bit of work to build a full-fledged social media, social network app for uh, those, uh, you know, for those environments as well as the web. But we did it, we launched it, and I think that's kind of the minimum requirement even to play in that game of social, because no one using social from the web. We launched that, and since then, we've been working on what I like to call our uniqueness. Because uh, 
historically, users only started to use new social networks when those uh, social media sites or social networks introduced a new interactive content format. That's the only thing that ever made any network succeed. That's what we did. We uh, we built a format that I've been, I have to say, I've been thinking about it uh, way before I even heard about EOS. And it's a basically what we like to call it is video dreads. It's the ability for people to upload a TikTok like video, short videos, but not just upload a regular video, but also being able to upload a video that is a response to an existing video. So if someone made a popular video, now he can have, you know, 10 people responding to that video with their own video, and the algorithm would automatically play the best response when the video ends. And each response can have, you know, people responding to it, and so on and so forth. So you can create dialogues, very elaborated dialogues that you can browse through. I invite everyone to download it. It's been released actually two days ago. Uh, we're all excited. Uh, it's on the app stores and uh, as BBS network, and you can create your own board and you can upload, you know, posts and stuff like that, but you can also upload the recording, uh, of video or audio, by the way, or to both. If you prefer your privacy, you can upload an audio, but then you can also respond and create conversations. And we think this is especially good to manage dialogues over controversial issues because First of all, it's good not to do controversial issues of live debate because yeah, you know, it's not emotional. It's not, that, uh, and it's actually pretty hard to to maintain a live debate. And it's definitely good not to do that on top of texts because text is toxic, and this is why Twitter is so toxic. And we found we, we take the best of both world and essentially uh, using video, but in an asynchronous way. And we think this is a great way to manage controversies and to debate like real important issues uh, where each time has uh, each party has time to think, to research, to consult before they post their answers. So we want to believe it will produce much, much higher quality content and higher quality discourse. But I think uh, more important that the only way to manage controversies on a social network in an effective way is if everyone can fully, fully trust the network and that only happens is if everything is transparent today's social networks each social network is you know bending to one you know ideology or another we saw the whole fight around twitter where you know it's like taken from one side and moved to another and there's definitely no social media site no social network that you can say you know what they're objective i can uh, you know i can be sure that they support all sides equally and that's what we believe um, our format is so interesting uh, for the future. And, you know, like uh, to, to have everyone try it and, and test it. You know, first product on EOS was called creator.eco. It was actually built uh, from within Bangor. Uh, and it was something very, very similar to BitClouch. It is a concept, creator colorings, and something uh, a bit speculative. I have to say that, uh, you know, our legal team did not prevent us from doing that. And I saw, I saw uh, BitCloud doing it later on. And I think, yeah, I didn't like the results. So I was actually quite happy that we didn't launch it. But at that point when we did, there was a very important lesson for us. And that was that, you know, letting users managing their own accounts is, it's actually very hard. And we decided that we're going to use a different model. We call it the operator model. So with BBS, we produce a software, but anyone can take the software and be, you know, set it on their server and become an operator. Just like becoming an ISP. You provide access, but all ISPs provide the access to the same internet. And the operator has a smart contract. Each operator has a smart contract where actually they store all the user's data, uh, all the user account, basically using a virtual account or using the, a username for the operator, therefore for, for the users. So even if the user forgot his private key, he can reconfirm uh, and re-authenticate in front of the operator and the operator can actually reset the private key. You know, it can be time delayed, it can be secured, it can require multiple signature, but, but there is the backward compatibility to Web2 where you can forget your password. So the entire BBS system 
was built on those virtual accounts and that been an enormous success because our first customer again didn't even uh, they didn't even know what notch it is most of the users and many of our new uh, uh, communities that has joined dbs network since they're just not watching people and uh, we take a lot of pride in that because we do think that basically blockchain is a public database technology just like the internet is a public network technology just the no. no, network before the internet the internet was you know public uh, in di differently from the others but we see the result when you have a public network then it's going to scale a thousand times more and you're going to have many more people jump in because you're not subjecting yourself to some monopoly that owns that network effect and we look the same way about databases that you know every every company that manage data uh, today they control the network effect whether it's uh, facebook or google or twitter or any big company you can even say that states and bureaucracy are the same but those are organizations that have exclusive access to their own data and that creates monopolies and uh, monopolies are stifling growth instead of encouraging it uh, like the free market does so that has been our philosophy and we are using you know we're using eos as a public database we're very happy to do that and i, 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 I want to say something more about that that a lot of people that i talk to they ask me so you know uh it's very nice but you know that if you're going to succeed you're going to be hitting a you know a glass ceiling because you're not going to be able to scale and then what i describe to them that you know we have this operator model and each operator has his own smart contract and eos was actually built to make it really easy to create side chains with eos or you know alternative chains like where you have the wax like there would be tell us and you know our operators can do the same they can set their own chains and start throwing their data into their own chain and each group of operators can manage their own chain and because of that you know each operator is a single entity that manages all smart contracts on a specific chain but they see all other contracts from all other networks from all other uh, uh, operators on all chain which makes it a single network when they can see everyone and they just need to you know to host their own users their own communities that they host on their smart contract this is what they need they write information but they read from all the rest which again, it's very similar to the ISP model. And many people are surprised when they learn about our architecture, there's no glass in it. We can scale it forever. There's nothing that really depends on it, on, on waiting for an EOS transaction, except when you withdraw profits, when you really need a, 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 a manual transaction. Because when we're talking about data, it's really about relocking the information. It's about event sourcing as an architecture for your platform so there's a lot of logs every event is on chain every event is in a smart contract and 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 we're using the advanced features just for stuff like you know transferring funds like bbs tokens which start happening a lot you know taking outside to of of, of the operator just when people withdraw but also you know users forgetting their passwords and you need to reset those kind of or you know or smart contracts that kind of is a directory for all the operators so they can find each other. So the very focused actions that we're doing with smart contract that literally allows us to scale in a indefinitely uh, with this structure. We're very happy about it. And now it's really about getting, uh, you know, getting the right product that would trigger what I like to call the great migration. The great migration of 5 billion users that's using social networks for average of 3.5 hours per day. This is by far, by far the most popular application today and in history. It's actually far away from all the others. And that's why I personally believe that this is how blockchain will become mainstream because social networks are so broken and it's just like they get more broken every day. You know, people get sick of the control of the censorship, of the manipulation of their profiteering, of their, you know, manipulating their algorithm to benefit their revenue rather than benefit their users. This big part of TikTok, TikTok success that actually keeps the, the, their algorithm user-focused. 
and 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 even TikTok has big parable of of, of censorship that many people acknowledged, uh, and you know this kind of Web three social network. It's not like we're saying no censorship, but we're saying no monopoly in censorship, which is the problem with all social networks. There's one censor, one body that controls what you can see on the entire network and the entire world, you know, and Facebook, two billion users, what they can see. There's one body that decides this is way too much power for any one entity, for any one organization. And because of that, you can be sure that will be enough people that want to, you know, get a piece of that and 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 get control over that and we saw that with the twitter files as clearly as anyone can see anything with our model it's choose your own sensor because you have you know so many operators and it's not really sensor it's moderator because you cannot delete anything from the web so so moderators can hide stuff from the users but then they need to be accountable for that because all this stuff would stay on chain and so one day you can come to your mother hey why did you delete that why did you say that corona is not from a lab and that's a conspiracy theory now we can see that you know you just uh, and that there's a lot of example but when it's not censorship when it's moderation and when you can choose your moderation you know that the user the customer is going to be in the middle and 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 whatever works for the customer will be the solutions and will be this that the gateway providers that would uh, you know be the most successful. We're almost kind of surprised to see how little um, activity there is outside of you know NFTs and maybe you know metaverses that are like three D and those are like the buzzwords of blockchain and they're very niche products. Like you know, for me, and, and you know, NFT is like a, you know it could be considered like an expensive watch, something you. Yeah. And, you know, owning digital IP is something that I think it's going to take a while for most people to realize that they even want it, why they want it, how they want it. It's a niche product. And not to mention metaverse that is like, you know, or it's going to take a while for people to, to get used to that one, to this alternative life. And, and we come here where we show, we show an app. We show an app that we, as I like to call it, uh, in an industry that we're demonopolized, uh, we're not the only one, there are many players that are trying to do that, but each one of them, if they're successful, it means that everyone else is going to be successful. Uh, because, you know, we're working on establishing a single social network, a single standard. And when uh, people ask me, so what change you're using? And I'm saying EOS, I have to say a lot of people are a bit surprised because they're like, why are you using, you know, L2 or that? And I explained to them that we did, uh, you know, extensive research to, to, to see the costs of different network. And, and EOS was by far, by far the best cost effective for what we did. Eventually, uh, you know, after the fact, in retrospect, it's actually quite obvious because EOS, EOS was built uh, after the lessons of Steemit, after the lessons of an actual social network that was the first I would say uh, web page, the uh, web-based social network. So, so it shouldn't be surprising that this is uh, optimized for the use case that we're using it. It was built for apps, and I think you know the future growth of modules is going to be around apps. And uh, for now, we're very very happy with it. And uh, we, you know, when I talk to the tech team, you know, we have tech team that building both on EOS and. On, and on EBM, and uh, they always uh, prefer to use EOS uh, because uh, you know it's just uh, more more intuitive for them, and um, that's why we you know we we keep using it, and we have no plan to migrate at a time. We are you know basically we are inviting everyone to engage in a new kind of dialogue, a new kind of social interaction which is what we call video threads. And this is the ability to respond to each other with video and really browse it uh, nicely. And we encourage you to download the app, you know, join our community. There are many communities. You can set up your own community. It takes only a second. Uh, you can join our community called MetaBBS and uh, start, you know, start your own thread and you know, say something, ask something. I'll be sure responding there. 
and we'll be able to experience how this whole thing works and uh, give us feedback. How can we make it good enough for the entire social media space to migrate to our product?